Today we're gonna to be making the Better Together aprons, which means you get one for you and a little one in your life, all out of one yard of canvas. So like I mentioned, you get both of these aprons out of your one yard of canvas. In addition to that, you're also gonna to wanna to pick up your one and a half inch O-rings. Those are for the little side loops on your apron and your one inch D-rings for the top. They just add a little bit of fine finish to it. It's a great little detail. In addition to that, you'll need six yards of this twill tape right here. And that is for your straps that cross over and tie in the back. So let's dive in to how we're gonna make this. I'm gonna teach you guys how to make the adult size apron. Uh, the kid size is very similar. All of those measurements are in the pattern. So let's just get started. So to begin with, for the adult size, you are going to cut 28 inches wide on your canvas. And so remember, this canvas is a little bit wider with the fabric than standard quilting cotton. And so you have a little bit extra to work with. And so we have cut ours 28 inches wide. That worked out just right for me. And then you're folding that in half. We're gonna trim this to 36 inches tall. So it should be a 28 by 36 inch rectangle that you're working with for the adult size apron. And then let's talk about how you determine the width of the top ring. So if you have a, a ruler or a tape measure and you just kind of gauge how wide you want the top of your apron, I wanted mine to finish up at 13 inches, which is a little wider than this one I'm wearing because this is for someone else. And so then you're going to take the number you want it to finish, add two, so 15, divided by two now. And so my number that I want this to measure over is seven and a half inches. So let's put this on the mat and you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. And then before this was cut, obviously this would be a full rectangle. I would set my template in place here. It's okay that it hangs over because we wanted the top to be a little bit larger. And then we'll just trace and cut out the armholes so that they match. And so that's what I've done there. So now we can go ahead and start prepping this by adding our hems. All right, so to begin with, we are going to do the armhole hem. And so all of these are turned under twice at a half an inch each time. And so I'm using this Clover hot ruler. It just helps because you can line your fabric right up along that and press against this. So let's go ahead and start doing that. And so we can just fold our fabric back and line it up right along that half inch mark and press against the hot ruler. And then just keep working our way around. If you have any trouble with this curve, you can clip this first turn under. But let's just see how it goes. See if we need to add any. I'm just doing a small section at a time as I'm working around that curve. And we're getting more to this straight section that will be easier. And down towards the end. There we go. And you can see this middle section here does not want to lay down. And so I am gonna grab my scissors and just put a few little snips in there along that inside curve. And that will help this to all lay down and just relax. And then I can press this again. There we go. And then now when I flip this again, 
it will cooperate a lot more. So I'm just gonna keep pressing this and then we're gonna run two lines of stitches, one on the outside and one right along this inside edge of that seam so that it lays nice and flat. Okay, like I mentioned, I have pressed this under a half inch twice and on this inside, I've clipped my curves. And so now we are just going to start our top stitching and I'm gonna do two lines of top stitching once along this outside edge and once on the inside and that's just going to give it a really beautiful finish and so i'm going to start with this inside edge and just take your time as you're working with this curve we go there's that first line of stitching and we're going to come back and add the second one There we go. And so now that we have those arms done, it makes the top and the bottom and the sides very easy. So we'll do the sides next and then we'll come back and do the top and bottom. But we do need to add some little tabs in to the sides and the top. So let's go ahead and prep those. Those are made out of our twill tape. And so every single one of those tabs is gonna be four inches. So I'm just going to cut a few of those here. So we'll just measure over four. One, two, three, and four. There we go. All right, so then the top two are going to have D-rings and the two on the side are going to have an O-ring. And so we are going to go ahead and feed these through just like so. I'm going to go ahead and just baste the ends so that we don't risk these sliding off later. So let's go ahead and take all of these to the machine and base these in place. trim those apart. And now those are ready and I'm going to go ahead and start ironing under the hems on the rest of this and I'll show you where we're going to insert the tabs. Okay so now I've gone around and I've, I've turned all my additional edges under a half inch twice. I have not stitched anything down yet though because I need to insert my D and O rings in before I do that. So I'm just going to go in basically the width of the arm curve here and slide 
my twill tape so that it's going to get caught into this seam. So I'm going to place a pin there just to hold that in place. And I'm going to do the same thing on this opposite side. There we go. And pin that in place. There we go. All right, so we're going to do the same double stitching. We are going to do the one closest to this bottom seam edge first. And then once we do that, we're going to flip these up so that we catch the twill tape in that second row of stitching. So let's go ahead and do that. And be sure to move your pins out of your way. So now, like I said, we're going to flip this up so it's crossing over our seam and we're going to stitch that second line of stitching. And this is just going to help strengthen those D-rings. It's like triple secure. using that exact same idea, you can see how that turns out so nicely, we're going to insert the O-rings in the side seam. And so just down from that arm seam that we did, we're going to tuck these into our seam, fold this back over, do our first line of stitching, fold them back, and do our second, just like we did on the top. So I'm going to finish that up and I'll meet you back here when it's done. All right, as you can see, we are now hemmed all the way around. We have our D-rings in at the top, our O-rings on the side, and our bottom hem done the exact same way. So now, up next, let's talk about adding the pocket. And so what I've done here is I've cut out a 10 by 18 inch rectangle, and I have gone ahead and top stitched the top edge, same half inch turn under, and then I've pressed under the three other sides. And so now, we need to find our center of our pocket. And you can kind of put a press line in there just to be able to reference, just like so. And we also need to find that center of our apron. So I'm gonna fold this in half and I'm gonna give it a good press on that fold line. There we go. Just make sure we have a nice crisp line in the middle there. And then now let's figure out where we want this pocket to go. So I'm going to open this up and lay it on my mat. And I like to use my ruler. And you can totally kind of figure out where you want this pocket to go for you but I found about 13 inches down from this top edge worked for me. And so this edge that we did the stitching on, that's gonna be the top of our pocket. So I'm gonna lay, lay that right along the 13 inch on my ruler and I've got the center seam, not seam, but the press line that I pressed in place lined up. And then now we can just pin this in place on our apron. And then we can take this to the machine. So let's just add a few more pins so we don't have any crazy shifting. There we go, and one more here. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew in a U shape 
to enclose these seams here and then once down the center on that press line. So let's go ahead and take this to the machine and do that. I like to back stitch at the start and stop. going to leave my needle down there and pivot. Move these pins out of the way so I don't throw them on the, the floor while I'm working. back stitching again here at the end. So now you can see the whole outside edge of the pocket is attached. We're just going to come back and add that line of stitching right down the middle. So let's go ahead and do that now. we go. So now our pocket is in place. So our apron is essentially finished. All we need to do now is make our straps. I use this twill tape and we cut them at 60 inches long for the adult size. So I have two of those cut here. And so all we're going to do is use that same half inch. And we're going to turn this under twice. Of course, you can eyeball this if you want. And this is for the end that won't be attached. So we'll go ahead and stitch across. And I actually went back all the way just to strengthen it a little bit. So there we go. And then on the opposite end, we're gonna start with that half inch turned under. And then because I want it to match kind of the finish that I have on my little D-rings here, I'm actually going to fold this down an inch and press this again, just like so. And then now I have both of these ready. I'm going to slide this through my D-ring on the top here, and then I can flip this over and stitch right along the edge. Be sure to back stitch. There's that one. And the seam is on the back. You know, the extra fabric is on the back there. And we'll do the same thing to this other side. I went ahead and pressed it as well. So we'll fold that through, measure up the one inch, so straight across. There we go. Ta-da! Now our apron is done. Those straps can crisscross in the back and slide through the O-rings on the side, which makes it really adjustable and forgiving for whoever's wearing it. And one of the things I love so much about this pattern is it was designed so that there is one for you and one for the little ones in your life. So you'll notice this small apron that I have here on the design wall. It even has the instructions to add the ruffle that you'll see on that one. And that's just really simple. You're just cutting that twice the finished width of your apron and gathering it on there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this project. It's a wonderful little gift. Uh, that you can whip up here at the holiday season. So have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.
Hey everyone, it's Misty. Thanks for watching at home. If you aren't already a part of our Missouri Star family, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want a notification every time we release a new video. I'll see you next Monday on the newest episode of At Home.